Good day and welcome to Insight, the program where we do an in-depth study into God's Word. I am Mornay Furstenberg and today with me in the studio, Rune Furstenberg, Speaker Director of Compass Pastoral Ministries. We are continuing with our studies in the book of Ephesians. And today we will see that Paul is speaking to the church of Ephesus and he tells them that the plan of redemption is a plan that is Christ-centered. It is a plan that was worked out before the creation of this earth. And yes, we have a guarantee. And that guarantee we find in verse 13 and 14. And because we have that guarantee, we can be sure of our salvation in Jesus Christ. Good day, Rene. It's good to have you back in the studio where we continue with our studies in the book of Ephesians, the, or the letter that Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. And uh, we are going into a little bit more depth, and we are studying from verse 3 until verse 14. But before we start with our study and open God's word, let us have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, it is a privilege once again to open your word as we read, as we study. May we understand your will for our lives. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us continue uh, reading <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 3, and we can read there up to verse 6. Okay. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every bless uh, spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Now, this is a lot of words that is <laughs> brought to us here, but let's break it down a little bit. And we need to understand that God chose us mm. and God accept us through Jesus Christ. Not on our own merits, but on the merits of, of Jesus his son. Christ. Yeah, and, and I love the fact that he says we ought to praise the Godhead for this gift of salvation. Yeah, that's wonderful that we, we need to th uh, think of that, that we... We always want to praise God for the blessings that he bestows upon us, but we do not always understand or see that the plan of salvation is also a blessing that we receive. Absolutely. And we have to praise God and thank God for that. And now it goes on, it says, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms. So this plan of salvation did not start or, on earth. The, or, it started it, yeah. in heaven, in the throne room where God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit were in discussion with each other, if I can put it that way. And they worked out the plan of salvation and that Jesus will be the vessel how men can be saved mm. and receive eternal life. So it goes on, verse 4, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. So he chose us. To be what? Blameless and holy. and holy in His sight. When? Even before we were created. Hmm. How wonderful is that? Can I have that this? It's as if uh, He's saying here, you know what? You were <clears throat> chosen to have the character of God. Yes. And you it should, should have... not be so difficult. You were, even from the beginning, you were chosen to have the character of God. Mm. Because that's what it says if you say holy and blameless in his sight. So, yes. So, so it's not supposed to be such an, an odd thing to, 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 to strive for. 
it's actually something that should be quite possible mm -hmm. if it comes, if it's a blessing that God has blessed us with. Now, now verse verse five it goes on and it says there, in love, he now that is that's Jesus that predestined us to be adopted. He predestined. He he determined before we were even created mm. that we can become his sons through Jesus Christ. Now there is one way and one way only that we can receive salvation. And that is through the Son, Jesus Christ. And that is by accepting mm. his gift that he did on Calvary for us. So giving, gave he his life mm. for us so that we can have life. So he died that life. And this is just, maybe let's just quickly bring that in. Jesus did not just die the first death. Remember, we spoke about first death, mm. second death in previous studies. The first death, the mm. one that we die here. He died the second death, the eternal death that you and I should die. Mm. He died that death for us so that we can have the everlasting life, which is his. Mm. Um, and that all even before we were created. It continues. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. Now, he gave this gift freely. Now, I, I want us to understand this. Have you ever, have you been ever in this circumstance that somebody wants to give you something? for free, without payment. Do you have a choice to accept it? Yes. You can either say, thank you very much, mm. and accept it, or you can say, no thank you. Mm. Now that is the gift, and, and this is the choice that we have as humans. We can either accept the salvation through Jesus Christ. Or we can reject it. Or we can reject it. But, but that makes the gift even more generous knowing very well that, um, that he gave his life even to those who in the end will reject his gift. Yes. That is he the, still gave it. Th that just shows us the marvelous love. Now, yeah. once again, God does not love. Let me just say that again. Listen carefully. <laughs> God does not love. God is love. There is a big difference. We love God is love. So everything that he does, it's out of love. it is out of love. And it is because of love. Now, this is what we must understand. That there's no way that the God had just decided that, oh, let, let's just do it because it's, it's the right thing to do. You know, it's, it's the good thing to do. It is out of love. Can I put it like this? This was an intentional rescue plan. This yeah. was the most precious intentional rescue plan that was made even before rescue was needed. Yeah. And do we now understand that, you know what, sometimes we, we like to go into a shopping mall or somewhere and we receive something for free. Have you ever received something for free? Now I'm sure all of us at some times have, re have received something for free. Let me ask you this question. Was it really free? Was it only free for you mm. or did somebody actually have to pay for it? Yeah. Um. So nothing that we receive that is for free is actually It must be free for us, but for us. someone paid but for it. But it cost somebody something. something. Mm. And in this case, the, the cost that Christ paid, he had to give up to be with the Father and to be the same as the Father, in the image of the Father. He gave that up to become a, a human being, mm -hmm. to have our flesh, not just for the 30 years while he was here on earth, mm. but for eternity, to become a man. That was costly. That the Son of God, the second person in the Godhead, gave his life so that mere people 
can have a chance or a choice to accept that redemption. Mm. Now, let's read verse 7 and 8. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance to the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. Mm. It's beautiful. Now, now this, is, this is verse 7. It says, in him we have redemption. In him we have redemption. If we are not in him, we do not have redemption. Right? This is what it says. Then it goes on. It says, how do we receive or, or how do we receive the redemption? One way and one way only. Through the blood Through of the Jesus. blood. So there must have been Something must have died. There must be right? a sacrifice. There must be a sacrifice. And it cost somebody his life. And it cost Jesus Christ his life. Mm. So that he can be resurrected through the Father once again to live like he gave us a chance to live. But it is by the blood. Not by works. Not by what we do. But by the blood. Mm. Right? Let's just quickly... Read verse 8 and 9 of chapter 2. So we just get the, the background. And it goes there, it says, For it is by grace you have been saved, okay. through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So you cannot earn your salvation. I think that's, that, that's pretty um, straightforward in the next few words where it says, in accordance with the riches of his of God's grace, grace which He lavished upon us, I, I mean, it's as if God just couldn't stop giving an abundance of grace each and every day for those who are in Him. Now it goes on. It says there, on us with all wisdom and understanding. Now let me tell you what. I don't think any human being can fully understand the redemption plan and the wisdom in that, that you will give your only son, part of you, to die for somebody that is not even worthy of it. <laughs> we cannot understand it. But this is the wisdom and the understanding, the godly wisdom and the godly understanding that we cannot understand. Mm. And we just have to accept it by faith that his sacrifice was great enough, good enough, so that there can be salvation for all men, possibility for all men to be saved, hmm. and not one to be excluded. Isn't that an interesting um, thread that runs through this letter of, of Paul? You know... Uh, in any letter that's written, even if it's just a, a marketer who wants to sell a specific product, in his um, letter that he writes to, let's say, to the, to, to the management of the place that he's being a marketer for, you will always find the thread of the way that he's pushing um, this specific product that he wants to mm -hmm. sell Maybe not a good example, but you'll understand what I mean. Isn't it interesting that when you read this letter of Paul, he is concentrating constantly on the concept that salvation is free yes. and salvation is for everyone. So remember now last week's lesson, <clears throat> hey? We need to understand why was this letter written? What is the underlying issues within the, the church in Ephesus? What's the problems that they are facing? So first of all, in this piece that we have been studying now, we must realize that certainly people are struggling with the concept of free salvation. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's people in the church who thinks that that needs to be add-ons yep. but before before you yeah, Christ, Christ God, died for us but but you need to be the, you need to do this and this extra and second of all the fact that salvation is free for everybody which means that there might in this church be an issue with 
maybe these uh, the, the the Jewish uh, um, the Christians Jews, that, the Jews that and came the Gentiles, and yeah. the, gent, the Gentiles that came in now as new Christians, there might have been some cultural issues, language issues, and it caused some friction. Mm, yes. And now suddenly there is a problem. It's interesting right at the beginning of this letter that Paul keeps keeps reminding the church salvation is free and it's free for everyone. Right. Do we need to remain reminded of that? I wonder. <laughs> let us let us uh, look once again at uh, verse nine and ten. It says, "And he made known to us the mystery of his will." So the mystery of his will is that. Salvation, like you just said, is for everyone because he now is speaking <coughs> to the to the Jewish people here in the church and say, "Oh no, but it was only for the Jews." But there was a mystery: the Jews were only the vessel, the nation that should have spread the gospel to the whole world. But because they rejected Christ, the Messiah, it now went to everybody else. So salvation is not new to to everybody. It is a thing that was there. Always for everybody. And, and we go on and it says there in uh, verse 10, to put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment. So at the right time, mm. the son came to die on the cross for you and for me, according to prophecy. Mm. Right, so not just haphazardly, on the right time. And it goes on, it says, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. Now it says there, Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the head. The rest of us, the church, is the body. Now everybody and everything in the creation needs to be brought in under one head, which is Jesus Christ. So there's a unity. Uh, the Godhead wants us to unite as different peoples, as different languages, like we, like we have done in Revelation, mm. right? The gospel should be spread to every tongue, kindred, and nation. Mm. So all of us should be one, and there's only one head. There's not a head plus, plus another smaller head plus another smaller head. <laughs> there's one head, and the rest of us must all unite under Christ Jesus, who firstly created us, and secondly, died on the cross, so we are twice his inheritance, his people, which he not only created, but also bought with a price. But the plan, everything in this plan of salvation is about Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the whole plan of salvation. And even if we go like we have studied in the previous um, lessons on the sanctuary system, right, the sanctuary, everything in the sanctuary points, points to Jesus, to Jesus. So that is the, the thing that we always say in church, when you ask a question and somebody needs to answer <laughs> something, the answer is always Jesus. Jesus is the answer to all our problems. Jesus is the answer to our salvation. Okay. <laughs> and, and this is also the thing that we must remember. When we bring the gospel, the good news, we must bring Jesus. Because he must be always the center of everything that we bring to others. Now, it, it goes on and it says, verse 11 and 12, In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him, who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. Now, we should live and everything that we do should be to the glorification of our Lord and our Savior. Now it says there, having been predestined. Christ, let's, let's go to John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. Let's quickly go there. John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And not only verse 16. Verse 17 as well, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So, everyone has got a chance. 
but not everybody will accept the chance. Now, mm. it is that thing of a gift, right? Have you ever received a gift that you have said no to the gift? Yes, mm. we have all. And we all have that chance to accept. But God has predestined. God, God has decided even before we were created that he will send his son to die for us and that if we accept him and live in Jesus Christ, we will receive eternal life. Let's continue and uh, we read uh, verse 13 and 14. We get a down payment. This is, this is something wonderful. We get a down payment. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing your inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the, pra to the praise of his glory. Now, when, when we come to repentance and when we accept Christ as our personal Savior and we accept the gift that he has done to us, it says, then we are baptized and then we will receive. And we have read it so many times. We receive the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. But it says here that the Holy Spirit is a down payment, a deposit, something that you can say, because I have this, I know that there is eternal life. I know that there is something bigger that is coming. Not only to have the Spirit with us here on earth, but to unite, to be with the Godhead for all eternity in future times. <laughs> and this is the wonderful thing that we need to know, that because when we accept Christ, we, we, we get a surety, if I can say so. Yes, that's right. That when you <clears throat> accept Him, there will be salvation for you mm. and once again if you listen and live according to what the holy spirit is telling you to do this is the wonderful essence of these first few verses in the book um, or, or the letter written to the ephesians and, and he says don't worry uh, be encouraged that you don't have to work out your salvation by works. Mm. You just have to accept it by faith through Jesus Christ mm. and accept his plan, mm. his sacrifice for your life. Absolutely. And, and I, I have to say, even in, in our thankfulness that God has done this for us, we need to remember that he's done it even for that person that you don't like so much. Unfortunately, that is true <laughs> because God died for, for everyone. Remember why Paul has written this letter and why he's concentrating on this. Because there were people in the church of Ephesus who were now suddenly dividing the church mm. and not bringing it together as it should be under Christ. So the promise of salvation is free and the beauty of it is free, but it's also free for everybody. everybody. Let us remember that constantly. Even that person that you don't like so much, God has died for him and her as well. Thank you for being with us. Renee, will you close for us with a prayer? Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much that we could once again open your word and allow your Holy Spirit to speak to us. And to remind us that salvation is free and that it's free for everybody and that it is precious. And it is something that we need to keep close to our hearts and be thankful for every day. Thank you that you have encouraged us once again with the reminder that we have been chosen from even before we were created to receive a redeemer that would come and give us life if ever rescue was necessary, in which case it was. Thank you, Lord, that you loved us so much. Amen.